Hi Saints, I'm just going to wait to see if we can get a few people online before I start. I have something I want to talk to you guys about um, in regards to what has happened, what has transpired um, on Friday and today and what will transpire very soon again on January 15th. So you guys know it's me, Malik Grubbin, and doing a live Facebook live look I'm not in my car you guys I actually found a way to get a stand and sit it up in my house I'm so sick of doing YouTube videos this is like very easy and then I can come to you guys in the raw on top of that um but I'm going to talk about a couple of things so you guys know you've been um probably you guys are probably aware of what's going on with Israel um Everyone knows that on Friday, right before Hanukkah, right before Christmas, um, the UN made a decision to uh, vote against the Israeli settlements, um, 14 to 1, 14 nations to 1. Of course, the 1 was the United States, and we decided that we were going to abstain which is abstaining is to me is just as bad as saying as joining the crowd because we didn't go against it. You know, we in other words, we stayed neutral. And um, and so, you know, that's what we did in, in regards to that. And so um, and then today, many of you probably know that uh, John Kerry made a speech um, basically talking about you know his their reasoning for voting against Israeli settlements and then of course he tried to uh, condemn or you know basically tried to say that uh, they that the United States and the Obama administration had not conspired against Israel which we know this is a lie they've been planning this for some time so a couple things I want to talk to you guys about and then yes I'm gonna leave this video up because I'm not putting this out on YouTube um, I was sitting for a couple days saying, okay, what do I do about this, Lord? Like, I don't want to do any more YouTube videos. Um, I'm tired of doing YouTube videos. I'm tired of the people on social media, period. Um, but it's something that I feel like you guys really need to hear. And so you guys can take this. If you guys want to upload it on YouTube, it's it's a raw video. I'm okay with that if you want to do that. Um, but I'm going to talk to you guys about a couple of things. So the first thing I want to tell you is this. Um, they've been conspiring to do this for a long time, first and foremost. And I know you guys know this. Um, if you guys remember about four years ago, it was like the, it was the end of 2012, I believe it was. It was the, the presidential dinner that they have every year. Um, President Obama, he made the statement. He said he was talking to his conspiracy theorist people, you know, he was like, all of you conspiracy theorist people, he said he wanted us to leave him with this. He says, for at the end of his first term, he wanted he was going to be known for winning the war on Iraq. And he said for his second term, he was going to be known for winning the war on Christmas. Now, he said this, I think, about four years ago. And nobody for the longest time really knew what the war on Christmas meant. None of us knew. We didn't know. Then, you know, we, we speculated because last year, you know, the Pope made that announcement that it might be our last Christmas before World War III. And, you know, then they said that the Queen had said it. And there was a lot of things that were out there. I heard those things myself. I was late hearing those things, but it happened. I think now we know what it meant. When the war on Christmas, I believe that this is what he was talking about. It was the war against Israel. You know that for the last eight years, they, you know... We've had chilly ties with Israel. Um, we know that Netanyahu and, and Obama are not the best of friends. We've known that for a long time. And that they've had issues with Israel. They've had issues with Benjamin Netanyahu. They've mistreated him over the last three, eight years. They've mistreated him. They shunned him even on multiple occasions. You know. But let me tell you something. You guys know this. The word of God still stands true. It was a promise that was given to Abraham for 4,000, 4, 4, almost 5,000 years ago. He said, I will bless those who bless thee, and I will curse those who curse thee. 
And when God made this covenant with Abraham, he made it, he said, to last a thousand generations. A thousand generations has not passed. A thousand generations actually won't come. I mean, the average generation is 70 years, according to the Bible. Some argue it's between seven and eight, 70 and 80. They base that off of the Psalms that says 70, 80 was actually the Psalmist David who said that. And if you take, if you take 70 and we multiply by a thousand, we know we're not there yet, okay? So the thousand generations, it would last. And so God's word is true. You know, here is Israel living wickedly? The answer is yes. I've heard some people say some things about Israel. You know, Tel Aviv is the homosexual capital of the Middle East. Middle East. These things are true. Okay. There are some things that are going on in Israel that God is not pleased with. But God's word is true. His word stands firm, no matter what, okay? And so we know that the tribulation is revolved around the Middle East. We know that the 70th week of Daniel is approaching, Jacob's trouble is approaching, you know, the book of Revelation, the, the opening of the seals. I mean, we're here, we're at this time, all right? So these things must come to pass, no matter what. Um, we can't delay those things. We can't delay Bible prophecy, saints. We, we just can't. Um, I know there's some people that really think that we can. There are some pastors out there that think if you just pray hard enough that God is going to delay Bible prophecy. It's just not written. It's not in the scriptures. And like all things, and I've always told everyone, you know, we must seek God for ourselves. We must not look for man. We must look for God and everything that we do and everything that we say there are many people out here. There are many voices out here, okay? I mean, even my voice, I mean, there's a lot of you guys that have followed me over the last two to three years, maybe longer. People have listened to my, you guys have looked at my posts. You guys have followed my Facebook posts. You've listened to my YouTube videos, my interviews. And not everything I say has come to pass yet. There's a lot of things that have put out there that I went out, that I'm getting ready to go over some one of those things right now, that went out years ago. Um, that it's been three years now and now it's coming to pass. But I was told three years ago to put it out. We never know these timings. We don't. We're flawed individuals. That's why I tell people all the time, don't follow me, follow Jesus. Don't just follow me. Don't follow any people. I mean, God will use us. He'll give us dreams, visions. Listen, we all have dreams and visions. We're at that time. We're living that time where God will give us dreams and visions. But as with everything, we're to take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord. Know God for yourself. Ask him. Listen, it's Lord. I hear this. Does this resonate in my spirit? Do I feel a confirmation from this? Always take things to prayer no matter what. Why? Why? Because we're not God. We're not perfect. We're supposed to be striving to perfection. And that's a day-to-day -day task, saints. That's a, that's a daily death. It is. And we all should be striving to that. But the fact of the matter remains is that we're all human. And we should remember that before we start jumping the boat or jumping ship and start tearing down other people. Now, I've said this before, and, you know, I'm not even addressing this about myself. Yes, I know there's a bunch of stuff out there about me. Honestly, I mean, it really doesn't care. But I have seen other brothers and sisters in Christ that people have torn down so bad that they taken down their pages, they're taking down their YouTube videos, they've given up, they've come off the wall. And one of the things the Lord has shown me just not even a week ago, like two nights ago, he showed me a body and the body was cut in half. And the Lord said to me that the body is divided. He said the first half is seeking flesh and he said the, set, the last half is seeking the spirit. He said the body is divided and it is, it's so true, the body is divided today. And, we're not ready. We're still not ready for his deter cause return because now we're divided. I'm not going to get off. I'm going to get off my soapbox and then I'm going to tell you guys what I really want to talk to you all about. So in 2013, if you list, if, if you looked at my YouTube, not my YouTube, excuse me, my Facebook post that I put out in the last week sometime, um, you saw that in 2013, August 1st, 2013, I put out a post. I was actually living in Maryland at the time. I had a dream and I had a vision. Um, they were not in the same day. The, the dream was this. The dream was 
that I saw John Kerry standing before a group of people. It was, I didn't know if it was Congress. I didn't know if it was the Senate. I have no idea. But it was like politicians, you know, people in the government. And he was making this speech. He was making this announcement about why we were not going to support Israel anymore. And he was very angry. He was shaking his fists in the air. And he was saying that he was not going to, we were not, we being the United States, we were no longer going to support Israel because Israel had made a mockery of his peace talks. And he says that in the dream, he tells the people that Israel sent him a prostitute and a bottle of wine. And he was very angry about it. And he said, because of this, that we, the United States, we were no longer going to support Israel. Um, a couple of weeks after that, I was in prayer and I went into this vision again. This is in the summer of 2013. This happened. This was three years ago, a little over three years ago now. And when I went into this vision, I was looking through this small window and it was like, and I was looking at, I was looking over the city of Jerusalem, like the way it looks now. And it looked like an average day, you know, traffic and the sun was shining. You know, it was just a clear, bright, regular, normal day that you would look at, like a, a live video or something over Jerusalem. And I blinked. And when I looked again, it was like complete opposite. It was like total chaos and confusion. There was like buildings burning and people were running. And things were like really chaotic, like they were in some form of war. When I came out of the vision, I asked the Lord, I said, what is this that I'm seeing? And he told me, he said, Jacob's trouble has begun. So I put this out on August 1st of 2013. If you guys have not seen it yet, um, just go to my website at faithfulwalkhealingministries.com or you go to my, waist, my Facebook page and scroll down. I put the link up there. It's still there. I want to read you guys something. After I had that dream, the dream about John Kerry, which I think is what occurred today. Well, it's, it's a combination of what occurred on Friday and what occurred today. He said that, I'm sorry, the table shaking. Um, he said that he was given a prostitute and a bottle of wine. When I, I thought it was the strangest thing three years ago. Um, I didn't know what that meant. So I went to go do some research on it. I wanted to see if there was like some like old saying about it or what have you. Come to find out, it is actually in the famous Joel chapter 3. You know, got, you know, the scripture about, you know, he'll pour out, on the last days he'll pour out his spirit on all flesh. It's in that chapter. I want to read a piece of that scripture to you because it's exactly what is happening right now. And it's, it's, it, I'm not totally surprised, but it's just very interesting that, again, God gave this to me three, almost three and a half years ago. And I put it out. And three and a half years later, this thing is, is coming. It hasn't completely because, again, I saw Israel in war. It's starting to, the pieces are starting to come together and it's starting to come to pass. Okay, so I'm going to read you a piece of Joel chapter 3. It says, and this is the New King James Version, all right? So it's, it's titled, God Judges the Nations. It says, for behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather the nation. So let me pause right there. He said in those days, he's talking about the last days after he brings back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem. OK, so he's bringing them back. He says, I will also gather the nations and I will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and I will enter my judgment with them there. On account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, they have also divided up my land. Listen to that. Dividing up the land. That's what they're doing. They have cast lots for my people, it says. They have given a boy as a payment for a prostitute, and they have sold a girl for a bottle of wine that they may drink. Indeed, what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the coasts of Philist uh, uh, Philistia? Now, that's verse 4. It says Philistia in the New King James Version. And like the New Living Translation, it actually says Palestine is the word that's translated for that. Um, it says, will you retaliate against me? But if you retaliate against me swiftly and speedily, I will return your retaliation upon your own head. Now, again, this is Joel chapter three, verses one through four that I just read you. 
So I'm saying that to say, and you guys know the rest of the chapter. It's a very common chapter or a famous chapter. I believe that even in the dream that I had three and a half years ago where I saw this man, get, he said Israel had given him a bottle of wine and a prostitute. I believe it was tied into Joel chapter three, um, talking about Jacob's trouble, the time where they would divide the land. That's what it's talking about in the beginning of the in the of the of the chapter. But it says that as they come against God, he will rise up against them. OK, and so we know that God will protect Jerusalem more than anything. It's not just Israel. It's Jerusalem, because we know that the Prince of Peace, when he returns, that his foot will step on the Mount of Olives. Jerusalem will be is will, is the place where he will reign forever and ever and ever. And so we know that Jerusalem will never be overtaken completely again. But we also know that that it will be the center of the tribulation and much judgment. And I truly believe, saints, that we are coming to that time right now as we speak. Um. I believe that the Obama administration has been planning this for a very long time. Okay, the last part I want to tell you that's in that link. And again, you can click on the link for yourself. It's posted August 1st, 2013 that I put out. I said, I knew that in the dream that Carrie's secret had been revealed. Now, I don't know what that, I didn't know what that secret was then. I just knew that his secret had been revealed and that's why he was so angry. Here's what I think that it was. I think it was the secret that they had been planning this all along. Because remember, today he goes out and he tries to defend by saying that they hadn't conspired to do this. Netanyahu accused them over the weekend, over the holiday weekend, of, of colluding, he said. Basically, he called Obama a snake. He pretty much did that and said that they had been planning this behind their back. There's also some speculation that this is part of the reason why um, John Kerry went down to New Zealand because um, he kind of abruptly went down to New Zealand in the month of November. It was very interesting. He went down there to discuss some things, okay? And then all of a sudden, like within two weeks after that, the Prime Minister of New Zealand resigns. And, um, and the new guy takes place, and then there's this earthquake. Well, here's the interesting thing. So it's believed that this is part of the reason why John Kerry went down there. So I did not know this, but New Zealand actually had really close ties to Israel. And here's the other thing you guys didn't know that I just, I didn't know either. Um, the prime minister of New Zealand was a Jew. His mother was from Austria. He was one of the people that escaped during Nazi Germany. Um, but anyways, he was a Jew. And um, John Kerry went down there to talk to him, and we don't know what that discussion was. All of a sudden, he resigns abruptly, um, attributing it to family, personal family issues. And then John Kerry leaves, and someone else takes over, and then a major earthquake hits New Zealand. That also caused a small tsunami that even hit the coast of Wellington, which is south um, on the North Island, because there's two islands from New Zealand. There's a North Island and there's a South Island. God is not playing saints. Um, I think there's been 10 times, if I'm not mistaken, that we've come against Israel in the past that something tragic has happened to our nation. The most recent one that I clearly remember was in 2005. I remember in 2005 when George W. was really pressuring Ariel Sharon to give up that land in Gaza and in the West Bank. Um, it started in about March of that year. Um, and finally, in August, August 15th of 2005, they, Ariel Sharon came into agreement with George W. Um, they began to, they literally ripped the Jews out of their homes. Like there were horrifying pictures. I remember seeing, I remember my mother crying when she saw the picture. She just started crying. Um, they were like dragging the people hand and foot out of their homes. The men had the tallits on it. The people were holding on to, 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 the children were holding on to gates and they were ripping the kids out of the parents' arms. And they, they ripped these people out of the Gaza, out of Gaza area in the West Bank in 2005, summer of 2005. So 2005 was one of the worst hurricane seasons on record for the Atlantic in America. 
Her, the hurricane season produced record amounts of Category 3 and above storms, one of them of which was Hurricane Katrina. I was living in Houston, Texas during that time. They came up the coast, the Gulf Coast, that killed, that scaled across three states and killed, actually four states, and killed over 1,200 people and displaced over 100,000 people, 100,000, more than 100,000, because we, Houston, we got 100,000 of those people. And it was, it was the most costliest, one that was number one, ranked number one, and the most costliest natural disaster in American history. I want you guys to know that Hurricane Katrina came down 15 days after they pulled those people and ripped those Jews out of the Gaza home. Um, also, about four months after they did this, Ariel Sharon had a stroke and went into a coma of which he stayed in for eight years until he finally died just two years ago. In addition to that, Arafat, who was also a part of this, someone poisoned him and he died. All of this happened after we messed with Israel in 2005. God is not playing. And we obviously have not learned our lesson. Um, in 2009, a man by the name of Pastor John Kilpatrick went on Sid Roth. He talked about a, a dream or a vision that God had given him regarding a major earthquake coming to this country. I believe it was the New Madrid fault line. He began to tell Sid Roth even then, he said, God told him that if we divide the land of Israel, our land will be divided. Later on in 2011, I believe a man named of Pastor Shane Warren out of Monroe, Louisiana, also went on Sid Roth. It talked about a vision where he that he had sitting on his couch where he saw the dollar plummet. He saw silver soar and there was a powerful earthquake. And he too said, if we divide the land of Israel, our land be, will be divided. There are many others out there. I believe even Perry Stone's father, Fred Stone, also mentioned this. For the last seven years, there have been multiple voices of people that have warned some that I'm cool with, some people I ain't cool with. There are some other names out there that are well known that have said, if we divide Israel, our land will be divided. In all cases, these people have seen massive earthquakes come to our country. My mother, my biological mother has said it for three years. She's seen this earthquake. She's been talking about this earthquake for a long time. But my mother swore up and down. She's been saying this for the last three years that she believed this earth, she knew this earthquake was coming and it was going to be because we would divide the land of Israel. She's been saying it for three years, three years. She, in fact, my mother's been saying it so much. She got on my nerves. I'm going to be honest with you. She got on my nerves. I got tired of her saying it. I think we're in trouble. Well, we've been in trouble. We've been in trouble for a long time. You know, and, and you know, we went through these elections and Two-thirds of the church that was at least semi-awake went back to sleep, believing that this particular, this particular person that God voted in is going to save the world. This is a lie. Don't be deceived, saints. He is a man. He is not God. He is not Jesus. He is a man. And, you know, I've been talking about being quiet. It's a time to be quiet. I've been telling people that I've been seeing people trying to drive their nail home and they're still putting out videos and they're still saying, you know, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. You know, this is a season to be quiet. This is a season to really seek the Lord for instructions. You know, don't, don't worry about the group of people that ain't listening, your family members, your church members, what have you. It's a time to, we really need to be still. We need to be still and we need to make sure that we are hearing from God, saints. Um, because we're coming into very critical times. I mean, someone's laughing about that. I really don't see anything funny about that. Somebody put out some, some laughing things. I don't see anything funny about that. Man is not going to save us. Donald Trump's not going to save this country. We need to cry out. We need to repent. We need to seek Jesus Christ. This isn't a, listen, no amount of prophecy is going to get anybody into heaven. No amount of dreams or visions is going to get any of us into heaven. It's not going to save a single soul. In the end, it's, do, it's not even do you know the Lord. It's does the Lord know you? 
That's all that matters in the end. You can prophesy all day long. You can even Jesus said in Matthew chapter seven, he said, well, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, he said any of that day, he said, what they're going to say, oh, Lord, did we prophesy in your name? In your name, didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we perform all these miracles? But Jesus said, I don't know you. So at the end of the day, no amount of prophecy is going to do any of us any good, whether it's Donald Trump or high heaven or the rapture or planetary alignments, earthquakes, storms, blood moons. It doesn't matter. We need to know Jesus Christ for ourselves. We need to know his voice for ourselves. We need to understand. We need to recognize him. We need to know him because the time clock has not stopped. All right. Judgment has not been delayed. The, the, the hand on the clock for the, the end of the age has not paused. You guys saw my post uh, on Christmas night, that picture of the church in Aleppo. They came together in a partially damaged church. They were able to come together and worship God, and we can't even do that here in America. We're out here backbiting, slandering, scoffing, nitpicking. You know, we're looking for the next best prophecy. Listen, don't look for the next best prophecy. Look for the word of God. Look at the word of God. Get on your knees and dwell in the secret place of the most high. Don't look for the next prophecy. That's not the answer, saints. The answer is not prophet so-and-so, prophetess so-and-so, evangelist, pastor, teacher so-and-so. It's not that. It's not eschatology. It's not Hebrew language. It's not festivals it is jesus christ and knowing him for yourself that is the answer and that is the only answer he said my sheep know my voice we're in trouble today i believe now this is mina's opinion okay this is not thus saith the lord this is mina's opinion i believe that there's going to be three strikes now this again this is my opinion i believe strike one was friday I believe strike two was today. I believe John Kerry lied, honestly. I believe he lied um, by saying that they had not conspired against Israel. I believe that strike three will be on January 15th, which will lead me to my last part. So if you guys don't know, January 15th, and I thought it was such an odd date. I was talking to one of my friends who's a minister that I have a lot of respect for. And her and I were talking yesterday about this. And so on January 15th, 70 nations, and I think that's a very interesting number, are supposed to come together to, I guess, like seal this deal, okay, about um, possibly giving East Jerusalem over to the Palestinians and uh, peace talks or what have you. Um... January 15th is a very interesting day. Number one, because we, I found it really weird because it's on a Sunday. And I thought, who would gather on a Sunday to do this? It's like so strange. But here's some in, in, interesting information. I told my friend, I said, you know what? It has to be something very significant about this day. It'd be in January 15th. So I decided to go look the information up. So here's the thing. On the Hebrew calendar... January 15th of 2017 falls on the 17th day of Tibet, 5777. Um, why is that important? It's actually extremely important, and I'm going to tell you why. That time, Tibet, is a very important month because it is a time of sorrow, and I'm going to tell you why. It is the time that Nebuchadnezzar came into the land. Uh, he began his three-year siege into Jerusalem. To take the people captive. That happened in the month of Tibet. In fact, it happened specifically on the 10th day of Tibet. You guys can go look it up. There are many people in the last year that I have heard outside of Mina. Okay. Because I don't have all the answers. Mina's not perfect. Mina is flesh just like you all. There are other people that I listen to, too. There are people that I pray about. People pray for me. People will rebuke me. Listen, I'm not perfect. Um, I've heard many people say that we're going into Babylonian captivity. 
You know, I said it on my video in May of last year when I wrote this video or put out this video called King Cyrus Catastrophe, the Triumph or Catastrophe is still out there on, Facebook, on um, YouTube. And I talked, see, see, it was that time that the Lord told me that Donald Trump was a decoy. He didn't tell me he was going to win or lose. He just said he was a decoy. And he gave me Jeremiah chapter 8. And he told me that verse 16 and 17 was Obama. You guys can go look that up for yourself. Jeremiah chapter 8. He gave me the whole chapter. It was talking about the judgment that was coming to America. And in that verse, it talks about the people who claimed that there would be peace and, and safety, but there would be no peace. It specifically said that. The, 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 those who were called that there would be peace, but there would be no peace. He gave that to me in May of, of this year. And I talked about how before there can be a King Cyrus, there has to be a Nebuchadnezzar. We have to go into captivity. A lot of people claim that, that Obama is our Nebuchadnezzar. I don't think that's true. That's my opinion. But if he is, then we ain't seen captivity yet. It's so interesting that this country, including 70 or 69 other countries, are going to come together on January 15th to try to seal the nail in the coffin regarding Israel. During the time, literally during the time that Nebuchadnezzar, well, a time where, where Nebuchadnezzar invaded and took the people into captivity. And we're meeting to, nail the, 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 to put the nail in the coffin about Israel at the same time on January 15th of 2017. I think no matter who's in office, we're going to pay for what we did to Israel because we've always paid. Again, the last time was 2005. We paid. We're going to pay again. Um, how we're going to pay, I don't know. You know, a lot of people, again, if we go back to John Kilpatrick, if we go back to Shane Warren, if we go back to many others, we find that they all saw a major earthquake hit this country. Um, the ones that have seen it, you know, there are some people that talk about the one on in, in the West Coast. Many have talked about the New Madrid fault line. Um, I just want you guys to pray. You know, someone said the other day, well, maybe God will um, just punish oh, the Obama administration and spare us. He's never done that. He's never done that. That's never happened. In the 10 times that we've moved against Israel, that has never happened. Somehow, some way, we've all paid for it. And so if it's never happened before, it ain't going to happen. You think God didn't know that they were going to do this? Oh, God knew. He knew a long time ago that they were going to wait to the last minute to do this and the transition of crossing over the power and all that stuff. Let me tell you something. You know, Donald Trump can tell you all day long that he can fix it at the snap of a finger. Let me tell you, if they knew that he could change it at the snap of a finger, they would have not conspired to do this at the last minute. They did this at the last minute because they know he's not going to be able to reverse it immediately. They're not. He's not going to be able to do it. it he can't go against the U.N., that's why they're doing this now before he gets in. It's not one nation. It's multiple nations that have done this. All right. Um, I think that's about it. Again, that post is out August 1st, 2013. Um. I've been teaching Bible study every Thursday night. With the last four months, we've been in the book of Acts. The Lord told me four months ago, start teaching the book of Acts, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. He said, I want you to, we're going to be, he says, I want you to teach this because I'm preparing the body of Christ, or his body to, his bride, to operate as the first century church. The first century church was really persecuted. And we're here. It's no longer coming. We're here. You know, continue to pray for the church. Compare, continue to pray for those that are blinded, that their eyes be open because many eyes have, have been blinded. People are in this delusional euphoria that one person is going to change everything overnight. You know, I'll leave you with this thing. There's a lot of stuff that I've seen over the last two months that I haven't peeped a word about. 
And I told I mean, unless the Lord told me to tell, tell you, I'd, I'd still say it. I'm not saying anything because the church ain't listening no more. It's not. But I'm going to leave you with this. The Lord told me, um, he showed me a couple weeks ago that the church had a veil of deception that had fallen over it. And he showed me the enemy, like a camp of enemies, like surrounding the church and like coming in, like in a circle, like they were, they were there and they couldn't see it. And they were surrounding them and closing in on them. And he told me, he said, he said, I came, he said, after Adam's sin, he said, the judgment on mankind was death. He said, and I came for a thousand years later to stand as mediation between man and the judgment that the father had sentenced on man because of its sin. He said, I'm the mediator. He said, and now the church has chosen a man that they believe that will stand between them and judgment. He said, but I already came to do that. He said, they picked this man over me. He said, I already came and did that. I already came and stood in between judgment and man. He said, and they've rejected me. And they picked a man. They think that they voted a man that will stand in between judgment and them. And it won't happen. And he let me know that because the veil of deception had fallen over the majority of the church in America. He said, he mentioned two kings to me. Saul and Ahab. He said both of them rejected the voice of the prophet, the true prophet. You know, there was Samuel and there was Elijah. He said, well, they sought the voices of false prophets. He said, and because of that, they, they went into battle believing that God was on their side and he wasn't. And it cost both of them their lives. And he said, that's where we're at. He said, they will go into battle thinking that I'm on their side and it's going to cost them their lives. And I believe that that battle, saints, is the battle of believing that this one particular person in his new administration is going to derail every single wicked plot out there. The elite, the one world order, he's going to overthrow abortion and homosexuality and perversion and pornography and, and drugs and alcohol and whatever else out there. Everything that has made this nation so wicked in the last four to five decades. Thinking that God is going to be on our side and he's not. We need to seek Jesus. We need to make sure that the scales are removed from our eyes. I'm, I'm going to automatically assume those who are listening to this now, you know, you guys are not blinded, but I'm pretty sure there are plenty that are. And, uh, and I'm pretty sure you know family members and you have people in your church and people that you probably love and really care about that are blinded. So pray for them. And I will tell you this, and I'm going to really shut up after this. <laughs> You know, for those of you who have been persecuted, for those of you who have been mocked and scoffed, people who have risen up against you and said you guys are idiots and you're heretics or you're false teachers, false prophets or um, prideful, arrogant, you know, whatever, all this stuff that people have said. There's ministers that are out there, there are individuals that they have said this about. I want you to just remember, forget. Forgive them because they know not what they do. Forgive no matter what, saints. It's a requirement. Don't argue. Don't become embittered. Don't become enraged. Forgive these people. Love your enemies and bless those who curse you. Do good to those who spitefully use you. 
Because there's going to come a time where they're going to need us. And you don't, don't you dare, and I said this before, don't dare, don't you dare turn around and treat them the same way that they treated you. That is not how God gets the glory. You love them. You pray for them. I'm not saying you got to take abuse, you know. But arguing with them and putting slanderous comments back on our pages, it's just a waste of time. The Holy Spirit is not in that. It isn't. Pray for them. Love them. Forgive them. What would Jesus do? Remind, remember that. What, what would Jesus do? That's what you need to ask yourself. When you feel yourself, when you feel your flesh well up. what would Jesus do? We need to walk like Christ. We need to be like Christ. Um, we're living in hard times, but just remember the Son of Man suffered. He was mocked. He was scoffed. He was betrayed. He was abandoned. He was kicked to the curb. They couldn't even tarry with him one hour after they knew he, was, he had been betrayed and they were coming for him. They still couldn't tarry with him one hour. And he was left alone. He was, but, you know, I always think of when he's, when Peter, you know, he was always running his mouth. That's me. I always like Peter because it kind of reminds me of myself. You know, Peter was always running his mouth. God, I'll go there. I'll do this. I'll do that. You know, but Peter denied that he even knew him three times. But, you know, Jesus said, Peter, I prayed for you. And what he had prayed was that the enemy wouldn't consume him because Judas was already consumed. And he knew that Judas was going to take his own life. I remember three years ago when the Lord told me that Judas didn't have to die. That stuck with me for months. When I was, this was back in 2011 when I was, went on a 40 day fast and asked the Lord to, to give me the fruit of love for people. To help me to see people the way he's seen, and they, he sees them. And he told me that was a bitter cup. And it was, and it still is. People still ridicule me all the time, but I still love and forgive. But nevertheless, you know, he told me one time in 2000, he said, Judas didn't have to die. He said, I love Judas. He said, if Judas had came to the foot of the cross while I was hanging there and looked up and asked me to forgive him, I would have forgiven him then. He said, but Judas took his own life, but he didn't have to die. And it was then that God really gave me the revelation that both Judas and Peter had betrayed him. In a sense. But he had prayed for Peter and he had prayed for Peter that he would not be consumed by the enemy. And he wasn't. Peter was redeemed. So these two, when it comes to these people who are out there who are mocking and scoffing and even your unbelieving friends and families and spouses and whatever, I want you to know they too can be redeemed. There's no, there's no sin too great that Jesus, the blood of Jesus can't wash away. So pray for them, intercede for them, forgive them, love them, but be wise. Be wise who you encounter. Be wise who you listen to, even when it comes to me. Be wise listening to me. No joke, okay? Because like I said, I'm, I'm a human being just like the rest of y'all, you know? Make sure before you listen to anybody, including me, that you know the voice of the Lord for yourself because that's, you know, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the truth bearer. He'll never lie. He'll never deceive you. He'll never tell you anything that ain't true. And he'll always keep you two steps ahead of Satan. So if something is not right, he'll let you know. He'll put that check in your spirit and he'll say, listen, this ain't right. And, and when he tells you, when he pulls at your heart and your spirit and he tells you, listen, this ain't right, you better listen. You better listen. I don't care how pretty the face is, how good they sound, how, how good they make your flesh feel, how your ears be ringing and tickling. If the Holy Spirit tells you it ain't right, run. 
Run for your life. Okay? Because ain't nobody out here worth your soul. Nobody on this planet, no preacher, teacher, prophet, man, child, woman, nobody and nothing is worth your place in the rapture. And it's none of it is worth your place in, in heaven, okay? Listen, y'all ain't gonna send me to hell, so please don't let me send you to hell, okay? And that's just, that's just keeping it real. We need to pray as a nation. We need to pray for one another. But I think something huge just happened. I believe that Friday was the, was the trigger. I've been waiting to see what was gonna be a trigger. I didn't know God, you know, hadn't shown me, hadn't shown a lot of people. A lot of people have been wondering. And I believe that Friday was a, a, a beginning of a domino effect in the coming days and weeks and, and 12, the, well, the next 10 months, I think now I said 12 months, two months ago, the next 10 to 11 months. All right, I'm going to get off of here. You guys can take this video and do what you want with it. <laughs> All right. I love you guys. I appreciate you watching um, and share this with your family and friends, okay? And that link is still up on my Facebook page. And all of my things from 2011 on, actually, I started the blog in 2012 to watch. On the wall, they're all still there. Um, I talk about some visions that I did, I saw in 2011, um, which the first ones I saw was Israel going into war. And I believe we're getting ready to see that very shortly. I believe Israel is getting ready to go into war. Um, whether it, it might be the Psalms 83 war that everybody's been talking about, possibly, I'm not sure. But I know that um, we're going to see Israel going to war very, very, very soon. So um, buckle up, you know, but more importantly, Keep your robes washed, your lamps filled, make sure your heart is pure, your eyes are anointed, your ears are open to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. All right. God bless you all. Love you as always. Till next time. Shalom.